Okay, so we're gonna get started today with exercise 125, which is one of the, the last, well, there's five left, but this is the one of the last big four uh, relating to your assignment 106. So we're gonna spend some time uh, working on that today. It's possible that your designs aren't fully flushed out or built in SketchUp yet. So I understand uh, that you obviously have to work on it. However, you can get a lot, and, and the reason that I start with an elevation view is that if you finish one side of the building, we can do the elevation for the one side of the building. So you don't, you don't have to have everything finished. And actually, when you see my, uh, my SketchUp file, you'll see that it's not finished, um, but I'm gonna show the part that is finished. And so if you can get one of the elevation views done, then you can work on exercise 125. For exercise 125, we're creating just one elevation view. So remember in assignment 105, we did all four elevation views. For this assignment in 106, um, we're only doing one elevation view. So you, you get to a, a reprieve on the other three, and that also means that you can, you can not have those fully fleshed out and, and still get reasonable results. So we're gonna go through that today. Um, I'll walk you through the entire process. Um, I do, and I put it in the, uh, in the exercise today, I do want to remind you that we're coming down to the end. We've got this portfolio coming up right there. Um, it's due on May 16th. You should have all of your assignments in it now, or you should be working on it. Remember, I, I mentioned last class, and I'll mention again, next week during our check-ins, I'm looking for uh, your portfolios. I want to see them. I want to see how they're coming together. I want to give you feedback on them, et cetera. Um, so we'll do that kind of three weeks in a row prepping for that final. So I really want to see it and I want you to be well flushed out and, and ready to share. So don't forget about that coming up uh, as well. So let's talk about um, getting an elevation from SketchUp and doing some collage work in Photoshop. So I went ahead and I opened up <laughs> my model. And this is that building that I've, that I've been working on here. And this one is ready in the front but it's very, very blank in the back. I have just the basic massing. I've got nothing on this side, but the front view has its windows kind of established and I can work with this and, and start to establish my elevation view of this building. So that's the, that's the big advantage is that I have one side done so I can go ahead and start working on the elevation view for this. So one of the, the problems that I see happen frequently is that when people get set up for the elevation view, obviously it's this side view, but they end up leaving it in perspective mode. So right now, this is a one point perspective or what's called a one point perspective. So if we look at lines that are parallel, we can see that this line, for example, is going to a vanishing point, you know, somewhere back in here. This line here is going to that same vanishing point. Over here, these lines are all converging. So it's not really an elevation view just yet. It's still a perspective. So we wanna change that into a true elevation view. And to do that, probably the easiest strategy is to go up to your um, camera and we're going to go to standard views and we're going to pick either the front, back, left, or right view. I think mine might be the front view. Nope, I was wrong. Let's go to the uh, back view. There we go. And you can see that it's still in perspective. So we're going to go up again to camera. And we're gonna change from this perspective view into what's called a parallel projection. And when we change into the parallel projection, you see that all of that perspective is eliminated. So we don't have that anymore. I'm gonna use the pan tool here to adjust the placements so that I'm in the middle of the screen. I may zoom in just a little bit. I want there to be room around my, my drawing here. Uh, let's go in just a little bit more. Let's say right about, right about like that. Sounds pretty good. Now, just like we did when we did the Francis Ching Cube House, in this model, we want to be able to repeat the same view. We want to be able to export the same view over and over again. SketchUp has a great way of saving our views for us. They're called scenes. So in the default tray over here on the side, if you're not seeing this, you can go up to window and then default tray so you can see it, it'll say show tray. Obviously mine's showing. And in that tray, we're gonna look at scenes and we're gonna click this little plus sign. And that adds a scene. 
Right now I'm, I'm at scene 16. I've used this file over and over. So I have different, um, uh, different scenes from previous semesters. So this, if I rename it, so let me right click on it and say rename. Then come right down here. And this is uh, elevation. And we'll say spring of 2022. You don't have to do the spring of 2022 because obviously you're just doing one, right? So there it is. Now the advantage is that if I were to move things around, so if I, I move things around like that or whatever, I can double click on this view and it'll take me back to that same view no matter what I've done. So it's always a good advantage. So I have that view established. Let's go ahead into my styles now. And this is a little bit of a repeat of what we talked about last time. We're gonna go into my styles and we're gonna make sure that I choose the hidden line style, which is currently what's showing. But I need to make some modifications to this hidden line style. First off, I need to remove the axes. So this red line here and that blue line right there need to go away. So I'm gonna to go to view and I'm gonna uncheck the axes check mark. And you see that those now go away. I also have some guides showing up here. I really don't need those guides either. So I'm gonna to go to view and then I'm gonna uncheck guides. There we go. So now I'm down to just a very plain and simple line drawing. That's ultimately what I want for my first export. So from here, we'll go ahead and go up to my file and we'll go to export and we'll go to 2D graphic. And I need to make sure that this gets saved in my folder. So let's go here into my live demonstrations. And I need to create a folder for today. Let's see, we're on 1.5. Let's create a new folder. Okay, and this is going to be my underscore lines. So I tried to title these so that they're obvious. So I'm gonna add underscore lines to the file name. And then I'll go ahead and before I click on export, I wanna look at the options. So I'll click on options here. And this is where I can use the viewport size or I can customize my size. We kind of want the minimum of one of these to maybe maybe 3000. Take a look. Yeah, it's not too bad. 3000, 4000, somewhere in there. So I'm getting a 5500 by 33,000. That seems reasonable. We want better quality set, uh, set all the way up here. We'll go ahead and say, okay. And then we'll go ahead and export it. Now, the good news is once I've done one of these exports, all those settings will stay the same. I don't have to remember what the settings were. So now that I have this first one done, it's time to start looking at what other exports I might want. So in the past, we did an x-ray version. So I came over to the styles, right? And I came over here and... Where did it go? Steve and I get lost sometimes. Hmm. It should have been an x-ray right there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't really need it because it's the, uh, the elevation view regardless, but let's do the shadows. So let me go to view and I'll check the mark for shadows. And we see that everything's dark. This is the north face of the building. So it's gonna be hard to get good quality shadows on it, but let's go ahead and try. I'm gonna look at my drawer here for shadows. And I'm going to change the time of day and the time of year. Go more into the summer. See if I can get a, a shadow. So there's a shadow right there. At least I'm getting a little bit of shadow cast on the building. Obviously, I have these um, overhangs that are, that are affecting the shadows. So there's the shadows. But I want to do this export without the lines. So I'll come back to styles here. I'm gonna go and uncheck the edges. So I end up with just the shadows. Now, if you're working on the free version online, you won't have this option. You'll just be able to export the shadows with the lines. It's fine, it'll still work, but it's nice to have separate control over your shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this one. So we'll go to file, export to the graphic. And this is now going to be renamed into shadows. There we go, and we'll go ahead and export.
And from here, let's go back to our styles and I'm gonna use under the um, sketchy edges, I'm gonna use that airbrush one that I liked before. Let's turn off the shadows. So I'll go up to view, we'll uncheck the shadows. Notice that I got my axes back. So we need to turn those axes off again. So I'll go to view, we're gonna turn off our guides. I'll go to view and we'll turn off our axes. Oh, those are off. Uh, Uh, it was section planes that were on. Anyway, we'll get to section planes in a little bit. So I'm going to export this one. So let me go to File and then Export 2D Graphic. And so this was my airbrush. So we'll delete shadows and append airbrush. And we'll export. And I also like the pen gray. And we'll come down here. I think it's. And gray, there we go. Again, I'll go to view. We're going to uncheck section planes. We're going to uncheck guides. And we're going to, yeah, that's good. And let's export this one. So I'll go to file, export 2D graphic. And we will append. Pen to this one, there we go, and we'll export. Now there's one other one that um, I tend to use in this elevation view, and it's just useful in terms of selecting things. So if we go into uh, go to assorted styles here, no, I don't like those, where are they? Default styles. We're gonna choose one that has a kind of a colored background for us. And let's see which one we like better. This one's actually pretty good. The reason that I'm picking this one is because it has a nice solid blue background. It has a nice green ground for the uh, ground. And I can use those as selections in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and again, we have to turn off the axes and the guides. So let's turn off the guides. Let's turn off the axes. There we go. And let's export this one. So I'll go to file and export. 2D graphic. This is only for selections. I'm not actually going to use any of the colors. It's just meant to help me out a little bit. And let's call this one color. And we'll go ahead and export it there as well. Perfect. So now I have my exports all done. We'll save this file. So I'll go to file and then save just in case I need to come back to it. And then I'm going to minimize it. And then I'm going to uh, jump over into Photoshop, which is really where the, the bulk of what's gonna happen is gonna happen today. We're gonna work in Photoshop. So when we came out of AutoCAD, we ended up working in Illustrator. In this scenario, we're coming out of uh, SketchUp and we're gonna work in Photoshop. And the reason that they're different and kind of, uh, while this is opening, I'll talk about that, highlighting why they're different. And that is that our export from SketchUp is a JPEG. I remember JPEGs are like photographs. So the logical place to edit those is going to be in Photoshop. Our export from AutoCAD was a PDF file that contains live lines. The obvious place to, to work on that would be in Illustrator. So we're using what's naturally coming out of our, our software program. And so this does really help us. Um, the other thing to kind of point out that's different is the output from AutoCAD that then goes into Illustrator is all at a particular scale. The drawings that we're creating right now actually are not at scale. They're relative to each other, but they're not at scale anymore. So when we go to put them on a board, we have to pay attention to how large they are and whether we really care that they're at scale or not at scale. You may have to do some sizing adjustments later on on these images to make them appear to be at scale. So it's important to recognize that we've lost the scale part of this. So let's go ahead and open up that first one. So I'll go to File and then Open. And I save that in our folder for today. I don't know if I can get to it here. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to open that first lines drawing. And maybe Photoshop will decide to open for me.
And there we go, perfect. So I have the lines. Um, then we're back in Photoshop. So you gotta like remember back to the beginning of the class when a drawing originally opens in Photoshop, remember it's on a locked background layer. If we wanna make that layer editable, we're gonna right click on that layer and say layer from background. Now I'm gonna rename this to be lines just to help clarify as I bring these together. Let's bring in the other ones. I'll go to file, place embedded, and we'll work our way through the rest. The order doesn't really matter. We'll commit to it, but I am going to rename these each. So this is now airbrush. And then let's bring in the next, <coughs> next one. File, place, embedded. Let's bring in the color. Let's rename it, color. File, place, embedded. Let's bring in the pen. And again, I'm going to rename that to be pen. And we'll go to file, place embedded. And we'll bring in the last one, which was the shadows. And we'll rename that one to be shadows. There we go. So I now have all of these. Remember that in order to see through, we're going to change these layers to be multiply layers. So the blending mode on airbrush, for example, we're gonna to change to be multiply. The blending mode on pen, we're gonna to change to be multiply. And the blending mode on shadows, we're gonna to change to be multiply. And so now we're seeing all of these kind of blended together into our final version. We can obviously change the order for clarity here. Um, and we can choose to turn on or turn off any of the individuals should we want to going forward. And we're going to make some adjustments. So what I've done is essentially what I did out of uh, our exercise 123, where I took all of my exports and I dropped them into Photoshop, I collaged them together, and I ended up with uh, a final result. This does look better than our SketchUp file if I were to just do an export with the shadows on in SketchUp. So if I went back here to hidden line, for example, or let's make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's go to, uh, I don't know, our sketchy edges and our, there's pen gray. Let me turn off my guides. Let me turn off those section planes. Let me turn on the shadows. Right, and so this is what SketchUp's version looks like. And if we take, we step back from this and we then look at our Photoshop version, we minimize this, right? There's, there's our Photoshop version, which is a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper, and we can kind of work with it. But to really make this shine as an elevation view, we want to start to add and embellish and work on this just a little bit more. Now you have the choice just like you did in your assignment 205 or your, your illustrator collage work as to how much is appropriate to do. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of examples of collage and kind of how I would insert it into a scene and all the rest of it. However, you may decide that it looks better as a black and white image or something that's a little bit more plain. And that's something that's up to you and it's a choice that you can make should you want to. So I'm gonna turn everything off but the lines right now. Go back to where we have just the lines. And I may use the color to kind of help things out a little bit. Um, let's, let's go back to the color version. And I'm going to do a magic wand as a selection here. So I'm gonna click the magic wand tool. And the advantage is that when I click on the green, uh, sorry, wrong layer, there we go. When I click on the green, it's gonna select just the green. And so that helps me with the selection. Let's go ahead and turn the lines back on. And on top of the lines, but below the pen tool, I'm gonna to create a brand new layer. So let me go down here. I'll click on the little plus sign to create a new layer. And I'm gonna call this layer ground. We may move it around a little bit more. Uh, actually, it should be above this, right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this ground with a color. So let's use my paintbrush, for example. And I have black selected, so let's go ahead and do a black fill. I'm gonna increase my brush size up here. 
make this a little bit quicker to paint. There's my brush size. I'm also gonna change my hardness to be 100% to make filling this in nice and easy. And we're gonna fill this in. All right, so that's been filled in. And so if we start to look at this, we say, okay, now that now there's a solid ground. We have that solid black ground, we have a, a, you know, our building up above, but it would be nice to kind of soften that edge just a little bit. It's a little bit stark. And we can do that by doing a couple things. One, we could actually kind of draw what the ground would look like. So let's come in here with a little bit of a selection I'm, and I'm coming right to my building. There's a selection and I could come back and this time I'll paint with white, right? And I could fill in what that ground looks like a little bit. Maybe I went a little bit far there. I could come over to this side and I could make that a little bit more casual as well. Like that. And then we could paint again, so I'll come back there. And we'll paint a little bit in white on that side. And that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so it's a little bit more natural. It has some ground on it. Obviously, where it's below the building, it's straight. That would be expected. But I can even take this a step further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone stamp tool now. And I'm going to use that grass brush that we used way back when. Uh, it is in the legacy brushes. So we have to go to this little gear icon, turn on legacy brushes. And then we can come down to our legacy brushes. And we go into default brushes. And about halfway down, we should see the grass brush. There it is. Oops. Doing grass, grass. Perfect. That's the brush I'm going to use. And I'm going to do that, like I said, in the clone stamp tool. So remember the way the clone stamp tool works is you hold down Alt. It copies from, so I'm going to copy from this black area and I'm going to start to draw the grass. And what I'm doing is I'm softening the edge of what I'm seeing here. So we'll work our way along. Like that. When I start to get close to the edge, I have to make sure I may need to reset my spot. And I'll come over here and do this. Now, for me, I think it looks better if we continue this grass all the way along. So I'm gonna continue this grass right along the, the front of the building here. Thanks for bearing with me as I do this. I'm going to hold down Alt and resample from a little bit further over, and then we can finish the grass there in the corner. And so now, if we start to look at it, I have a nice strong ground that's been established by that grass. Uh, we can put that all the way on top of everything. So no matter what we're showing, the grass is always, always going to be on top. Uh, so I can turn everything else back on, for example, and the grass is going to show up in front. So that immediately grounds what we're trying to do. Now, there are people who prefer not to have the stark contrast between the, the black and the white uh, of the ground. Remember, we can add an adjustment layer to the ground to determine what it looks like. So let's go into our um, layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna do a, uh, let's see, let's do a channel mixer, I think. And I want to tie this to the ground layer. Control Alt G will do that. So if I press Control Alt G, that didn't work. Sorry, Windows Mac problems. Uh, it's where is it? It's under layer. Find it. Create clipping mask. There we go. 
I usually did the keyboard shortcuts. Now what I do on this channel mixer layer is going to affect just the grass. That's why I did it like that. So let's, uh, let's look at the channel mixer. Uh, that wasn't what I wanted. There it is, there's our channel mixer. Uh, and let me see if we can adjust. Uh, you know what? I shouldn't have done the channel mixture. Let me do a levels instead. Sorry about that. Because we don't want the grass to be red. Uh, let's delete that one. See, even I make mistakes, right? Layer, new adjustment layer. And let's do a levels. I'll go up to layer and then we'll go to our create clipping mask. There we go. And then let's make this adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the overall color of the grass. There you go. So I'm dragging this black one over and you see that it's changing the color. I could actually take it all the way to white if I wanted to. I could take it into a gray. I could take it into a dark gray, etc. So the advantage is that I can make my edits on this adjustment layer and affect the ground without affecting everything else on the scene. Okay, so just different strategies for what you're doing. I'm going to leave it as black for right now, and then we'll look at it at the end and kind of decide what we want to do. So the next piece of this might be to add some kind of a background image behind this. So I need to find a background image to begin with. Now, if we were working uh, on a particular site, you would go out on a site visit. And while I wish we could all go to Yosemite and, and take pictures here, we don't have that option. So we're going to use Google image search to our advantage. So I'm going to go to images google.com and i'm going to search for yosemite meadow and I, apparently i spelled it wrong but and then in here i'm going to go to tools and i'm going to go to size and i want large and i also want under usage rights creative commons licenses and from here, I'm going to start looking at images that I might be able to use to do my collage work. So maybe something like this. Right? I could I could see my building inserted there. So let's go ahead and uh, visit this. And one of the challenges is always finding the right image. So it might take some time to go through different images and figure out where there's an image that would work for you. So maybe that one works, right? As we scroll through, some of these work better than others. This one probably would work. That one, yeah, it might work. The pond in the front is a little bit awkward. So the point is that you spend some time actually looking and deciding what image would work for you, right? These people are kind of in the way, but the rest of this image is pretty nice. Let's go back to the one that I picked here. Let's go ahead and download this. Download in full resolution. And then we'll right click and we'll say save image as, and I'm gonna save it into my folder for today. And we'll click save. Okay, so now let's bring this into Photoshop. So I'm here in my image, I'll go to file, <laughs> excuse me. I'll go to file and then place embedded. And we'll drop this image into our scene. There it is. I'm going to need to edit the overall size of it. I don't want it to get squished. So I want to make sure I'm maintaining proportions as I work on it. I actually don't have to hold any shifts down to do that. And ultimately what I'm looking for, and it may be beneficial to change the opacity a little bit, just so we can kind of see through there. I'm looking for this to line up kind of right about where the natural horizon would be. So we can have all our trees behind, et cetera. So maybe it's about like that. I want to make sure I completely cover my page. Yeah. Call it right about there. I'm going to change that opacity back to 100%, and I will commit to placing that image. So it's on the very top of all these layers. I could turn everything else off, for example, and we should see it. Why is it not showing? That's weird. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, my opacity went to zero instead of 100. There we go. That's what we were looking for. Okay, so my opacity is up, so we're good there. But I need to kind of cut this out for the building. So let's come back to that color version. So down here at the bottom, let's turn everything else off. And what I want to do, turn the ground off there. What I want to do is I want to use my magic wand to select the sky, the ground, and anything that's transparent in my building, anything that we'd see all the way through the building. So this piece is kind of the entry, so we'd see all the way through the building. The rest of this is glass, so we're not gonna worry about that. Then I'll turn back on my Yosemite Meadow. And with this selection, I'm gonna go ahead and create a clipping mask for it. So I'll go ahead and click on add layer mask, and it's gonna cut out the background for just my building. Then I need to move the background down so that it's at the bottom. And then we can turn back on the rest of my layers. And sorry, the, it needs to be above the lines layer. Uh, let's just make the lines layer multiply as well. There we go. Now, let me change the ground here. There we go. I'm changing the ground to multiply too. So it's pretty good. I am not entirely happy with how it's showing that, that transition there. I think maybe it should be a little bit lower. Um, the, the challenge there, of course, is that we've already created the, the layer mask on it. Um, so moving things around becomes a little bit more challenging um, because of that. So I might come back, delete this layer mask. Let's move my uh, background image down a little bit more. I'm using the arrow keys. Yeah, we'll go right about like that. And then I'm gonna redo it. So let's turn back on that color. We'll click on my magic wand. We'll select, oops, I need to be on the color layer. We'll select the background, holding down shift, selecting the ground, selecting this, which is my see-through part. Go back to the uh, background image and then click on add layer mask. There we go. And now we're seeing uh, that background. So this may be something that you want to do. It may not be something that you want to do, but adding that background image sometimes is uh, a good way of adding depth to your overall elevation. Now, of course, we can do some post-processing on this should we want to. So if you didn't want the color version, we could add uh, black and white. So if I went to layer, new adjustment layer, And I went to my uh, channel mixer. Remember, I'm going to tie these together by going up to layer, create clipping mask, or pressing control alt G. And then in this channel mixer, I'm going to change that background to be in black and white. And that may or may not be something that I want to do. Remember, we want to make sure that we're going through the presets and deciding which one looks the best. So you can go through each of the filters and decide which one uh, looks the best for you. So that may or may not be something that you wanna do. And the advantage here is that we can try it and then we can always go back to the color version later on. So we definitely have options. All right, so now that I have the, the background established, let's uh, start to take this a little bit further, okay? So I maybe I want to change, let me turn off the color. We're back to just the black and white here. And let me turn off the shadows temporarily just so we can kind of see it without. Maybe I wanna collage these windows and I wanna adjust the color of those windows. So I could be on either the color layer or the lines layer, and I could select all of those individual window panes, hold down shift, select them like that. The other option would be on the color layer. Let me turn everything else off and then go to select. And we can do a color range and pick just, oh, hold on. I had a selection already going. We select, let's go to select color range. And we could select just the windows and say, okay. And that's then gonna select the windows. So just different ways of making my selections. I still find usually the fastest to be the uh, magic wand where you can just go through and pick each of those windows.
And that way you know exactly what you're picking. Like that. So I've selected all of those window pieces. And then let's go ahead and create a new layer for windows. So I'll rename this one to be windows. And in its, in its most simple fashion, right? I could um, create a clipping mask on that layer. And I'm doing it by a clipping mask because then I can decide what goes behind it. So I have the clipping mask. I could simply paint in a blue color. So let's change my color to kind of a nice pale blue. And you'll see that if I just were to paint, oops, sorry. I was on the mask, I need to be on the layer itself. And if I were to paint, I could paint in where those windows are. I kind of did this in a backwards order. It might've been easier to see if I had done it um, first, but there's, there's those windows. The reason that I care about this is if I didn't want to do it as say just those, um, the kind of light blue, I could add <laughs> any photo that I could find. So I could come back here into, this, we could do a, a Google image search for cloudy sky, for example. All right, there's cloudy sky and I could pick any one of these. So let's say that I like uh, this one. And let's say I like this one. Uh, Download it. Oh, it's going to want me to do it. Let me do a flicker instead. I saw a flicker here. Um, or here's a wiki, wiki commons. That'll work. And let me go ahead and download the full resolution. I'll right click, I'll save image as, and we'll save it in that same folder. All right, hold on uh, one second. All right, sorry about that. So uh, I've downloaded the sky. Let's jump back into Photoshop here. And I can go to File and then Place Embedded. And we can pick that cloudy sky, for example. And just like we did in Illustrator, I can actually copy this layer mask. So I'll hold down the Alt key. I'll drag this up. And with the Alt key, it'll copy those clouds over for me. So my clipping mask goes there. Uh, now, if we started to turn things back on, turn them all back on there, you can see that I've added those clouds as a background. To me, those are a little bit strong. So I might take them and change that opacity kind of way down. So we're getting a touch of clouds, but not too much. And I actually think this starts to show better when the background is in black and white and then your clouds are in color. But again, that's a, that's a design decision. It's a choice that you can choose to make or not make. So we can, we can continue the collage work should we want to. We could collage in materials on here, but there's a certain point at which it, it feels like it's just too much. I'm gonna show you the materials, but I think you'll agree with me that it ends up being a little bit too much. So this is where we can use a tiling texture. So let me come back here and we'll go for a concrete, Texture, concrete tiling texture, let's see. I'm hoping I can download this without.
All right, let me download the JPEG. I've never done it from this website before, so. There it is. Okay, let's make sure that I get this onto my flash drive. Let's show it in its folder. Let's copy this. And I'm gonna place it here. And then I'm gonna drop this into my Photoshop. So we'll come back here into Photoshop. And for clarity, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the shadows so that we're not seeing that. And actually, let's turn off the pen and the airbrush as well. We're gonna work on the lines layer here. And so when I bring this in, if I go to file and then place embedded again, I'm gonna get that concrete texture. And there it is. This should be a seamless texture where I can copy it multiple times. So I'll go ahead and place this one. And then with it selected, I'm gonna go up to edit, copy, and then edit, paste. I could also do control V and control C. And we will move this one next to it. And hopefully they line up nicely. Use my edges there. And those are not the best in terms of tiling texture, uh, but we'll go with it. And I need a third one that comes over here. And there we go. I have all of those kind of covering up my building. I can take all three of those and merge them together. So in the layers, I'm gonna select all three. I've held shift and selected all three. Then I'm gonna go up to layer and I'm gonna come down here and choose merge layers. So they're selected, I've merged them together and this is concrete. You see that I'm taking time to kind of organize my layers and make sure that I, I rename them because it's gonna help long-term because you may end up with lots and lots of layers. So. Let's turn that off for a second. And I'm gonna use my lines to go ahead and select all the pieces of the building that are concrete. So I'll go ahead and select, oops, let me make sure I'm on my lines layer, sorry. So let me select this, let me select this. Okay, so I've selected the concrete part of the building. Now I'll go to the concrete layer, we'll turn it on and we'll say, add layer mask. And so now it's created a texture for that part of the building. I think when you turn back on the airbrush and the shadows, it'll help the overall look where you can kind of see that the, the texture of the concrete is just really there for the background. And so it's, it's something that you can do, but you have to weigh how much is too much, how much is too little, et cetera. For me, as I start to look at this drawing, it feels like the background is a little bit too dark. And so I could take the background and just lighten the overall. I could come in here into my opacity and I could lighten it up. That, that's certainly an option. The other option would be to create a bit of a gradient on that background. Right, where I could come in here on the background, and again, this would be on the mask, and I could use my gradient tool to go from black to white. So let's say this is, needs to be black, this needs to be white. And I could draw a little bit of a line at the top here that would start to fade away. Oops, it covered up. Okay, so I have an existing selection, so I need to, select the outside of the building. Let me go back to my color layer. There we go. So I'm selecting just to work in this section. And then we'll go back to my, uh, and now when I create the gradient, it's only affecting that top bit. And we can see it right there, it's adding the gradient. So what this is doing is it's fading the background to be transparent. So it's kind of fading out the background which sometimes is a nice look, especially if you're doing this on a big poster board where you don't want to have hard edges all the way around. So in this scenario, I've lightened that up. So with that, I still think it probably needs to be a little bit lighter overall. So I can adjust that opacity down just a bit so that it's not showing too much. And I end up with my building in contrast. For me, I think the concrete might be <coughs> detracting from what I'm seeing. It seems like it kind of melds it into the background. 
The other option would be to change the um, background back into color, and that might look a little bit better. So you keep playing around with these options and deciding what looks good and what doesn't look good. We may feel like the shadows are a little bit strong. We can obviously adjust the shadows so that they're not quite as strong. And again, that's, that's a personal preference. It's choice on your part uh, as to how much we should do. So all of that being said, right? let's say I like it. When I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and export this. So I would go to file and then export, uh, there we go, export and then export as, and I would save this as a JPEG. This is what we're looking for. You could actually save it as a PNG if you wanted. This is what we're looking for coming out uh, of today is the overall elevation view. I'm gonna take this one step further because sometimes people don't want the hard edges on the sides either. And so in that scenario, you might wanna do something that makes it, we'll call it a little bit more artistic um, where we might clip this whole thing out based on a particular pattern. So let me show you how to do that. But again, it's, we're now into the optional phase where we're doing uh, little bits of, uh, of pieces that may or may not be useful. So I'm gonna do this and I will do this again in the plan view when we do that next class. Um, but I'm gonna use an ink splat. Uh, I should do it in this, let's see here, so ink splat. And it might be a little bit informal, but it, it tends to work rather well. Let's see. For the background. And again, I'm doing this on the fly so you can see how I'm actually trying to, to pick. That one might be okay. Some of them just end up looking a little bit too fake. Like that one, for example, it looks too fake. Well, that one can be okay. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. We have several different ones. Let me use this one. All right, then let's go ahead and download this. I hope. Let's download. That looks like an ad. Huh. Well, we'll try that and see. Yeah, that didn't look right. Down there, there it is. I knew it was here. Sorry. Uh, this is a new one. Okay, looks like a download. And looks like I lost my cursor. All right, so let's go ahead and show it. Let's copy it, make sure it goes into my drive for today. We'll paste this one in here. All right, so now let me jump back into Photoshop. If we start to think of this um, as uh, an overall art piece, it actually might be even better to combine this whole thing into a JPEG and then do this at the end. And actually, let me do it that way. I'll go to File and then Export. 
and we'll go export as and we'll go ahead and click ex export. And I'll click save. And then I'll go ahead and open that one. So I'll go to file and then open. And there it was. And by doing this, essentially what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of all those layers so that I can work on it here. Let me go to file and then place embedded. I'm going to use that ink splot here. We need to make this a little bit bigger. Let's make it bigger. And we need to make sure that it's including my whole drawing. And I hope it's not this blurry. Hope it sharpens up. Yeah, it does sharpen up a little bit. Uh, it's not including everything. Mm, maybe I'll come back and do it on here. Uh, and I'll do it just to the background. That's probably a better strategy. Okay, so uh, let me go to file and then place again. Do it. Let's move this down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and commit to it. Okay, so this is a uh, if I if I were to move this down to the very bottom, I'm going to turn everything else off, and I end up with just this. Okay, so now that I have just this piece, I want to select um, the everything that's black. So let me go to select. And we're going to go to my uh, color range. I'm going to pick the black. I'm just conveniently going to select everything. Now all of that's selected. Now we can turn this off, and I'm going to go back to a couple select layers. So I'll go to my uh, Yosemite version here. I'm going to click on the mask, right? And I'm going to paint so that not all of this uh, is showing up. So. The, uh, what I end up wanting to do is I want to paint the background here. So not the selection, the inverse of the selection black. So let me go to select and then inverse. And I'm going to use my paintbrush. And I'm going to paint all of this in the background. And you see how it's starting to become transparent. And it probably would be a little bit faster if I increase the brush size. So I'll use the bracket key to make that brush a little bit bigger. All right, something like that. And what you'll see when I go back and do this is that the background, let me turn on the back one, the background is becoming more of an abstract piece of a photograph rather than a, like a strong part of the photograph. Um, and I can do this also on the ground layer. So I could come in here and we could, I need to select inverse here, select inverse, sorry. And then I could add a layer mask to that. And that's going to cut that part out as well. So the building's standing out from the background, but now the background is a much smaller uh, piece of the puzzle. That one's kind of a weird. Yeah, that is what it looks like. Okay. Um, and so let's turn this back on. Let's turn that back on. Yeah, that looks, that looks good. So this is just an abstract way of having your. Um, having your image basically floating rather than having a strong background. It's an example. It's different than this. Oops, look at this. It's different than this one. It's just a different look. And it may or may not be something that you think is attractive. And again, when I do these things live, sometimes my visions don't always turn out to be the most attractive in the world. So you may or may not like it. You may or may not want to do it, but it's just a different take on 
uh, one of these elevations. So I wanted to throw that out there for you uh, as an example. Okay. Um, so again, may or may not be relevant for you, but it's there. Oops, looks like I didn't quite paint everything on the very top of this one. I'm getting a little artifact up there at the top. There we go. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. My selection isn't there. So let's make this a little bit smaller. Sorry, little details that bug me. Okay, so that's done. So this is just another option uh, of how you might want to set it up. I'm just throwing it out there. We'll, we'll go back and we'll revisit this uh, as a way of kind of chopping your drawing. The, the advantage here is obviously that it can float independently on your board and not have the solid background that something like this one might have. Okay, so just different strategies. All right, so I know I'm, I'm out of time. Um, so I will let you guys go. Uh, if there's any questions, of course, I will be happy to, to address them. But if you guys are done um, and, and you don't have any questions, you're free to go. Please come to your check-ins today. If you end up with more questions or you needed to go over something, even if your check-in was on Monday, come back today and we'll talk about it in depth today as well. All right.